Hi everyone! In this video, we are going to see the process of rendering an object in Rhino. We will go step by step, first setting up your scene, creating a background, importing your model, placing it in an interesting way, then we will work on the lighting to create nice smooth shadows. We will then create the different materials to represent the best your design intentions. We will see how to add annotation to your model and tweak some final parameters before you can export it. So first of all, we are going to start by creating a new document, small object millimeter. Then we will import our model and we are going to start by creating a background. Make sure it's big enough and lock it. Then we're going to detach the Joy-Con to give a bit of dynamism to our model, like this. And we will um, put it apart from the floor and rotate it, like this. Next, we will place the camera. and we will save it into the name view tab. If it's not displayed, right click on your tabs and click on name views. Let's call it view one. Now, each time you move your camera, you can come back to your save view. Then now we're going to place a light, go from the top go into the render tools and we're going to place a rectangular light. Like this. Put it upper and to see how it acts on your model, go into the render mode. You'll see that it's quite bright, so you might want to turn your skylight and to see what are the settings of your light. You want to change the setup of the fall off and put it as inverse square. It is easier to control and it takes in consideration the distance from the object and then put the intensity a bit higher. If you want to see how it acts on your shadow, you can toggle the ray traced mode and you will see how it creates shadows on the floor. You can rise a bit your model to have softer shadows. And now that we have our light, we can come back to our name view and we can start adding some materials. We want to add a material for the main body, for the glass, for the two joy cons, and for the buttons. Create a new physically based material. dark grey and just drop it on the main body. Select the screen by Control shift poly surface, create a new material, physically based, and this one, this one is glass, so you want, you want it to be nearly black, and opacity, you want uh, to have it a bit more transparent, so you're going to lower the opacity slider. It's glass, so it's highly reflective, so roughness is uh, near to zero. And you want to apply your material to your geometry. So because it's selected, right click, assign to object. And you see that you assigned your glass to the screen. Create another material. This time, this is for the right Joy-Con. Select your Joy-Con and right click on your material, assign to object. You can tweak the color to have it a bit more red. Do the same for your other Joy-Con, physically based. And this one is blue. Create another one for your buttons, nearly black. Select both groups, assign to object. You'll notice that the joystick 
are separated and this will allow you to create a material which is a bit more matte uh, for, uh, for those as it is rubber. Select both your joystick and assign to object. You can increase the roughness. If you get closer, you can see the difference between your buttons and your joystick. Now you can tweak the lens length in order to have view which is a bit more isometric. Set camera, adjust length length and dolly. Left click and hold down, you will decrease the length length, while in the other direction you will um, increase it. You can see at the bottom of the screen the actual length length and we want something which is close to 200. With this length length, parallel lines seem to be parallel, a bit like in an isometric view. Then now we can change the environment to have a bit nicer uh, reflections. So in the rendering tab, we can change um, the environment. We can use any environment, import from environment library, and then you will have the choice between uh, all the environments uh, presetted into Rhino. So let's choose, let's say this one, and maybe can lower the roughness of the glass in order to have something maybe a bit less sharp here, something like this. When you go back into your name views, don't double click on your views, otherwise you will come back to your previous uh, lens length. You want to uh, save on it in order to update your view. Now, if we want to add dimensions, we'll need to change the seaplane direction. Go into seaplane and choose the set plane to object. Select the screen and then if you go in the shading mode, you'll notice that your seaplane is orientated parallel to your screen. Go into the drafting menu, select vertical dimension and select two points on the edge, two opposite points. Do the same at the top with horizontal dimension. Select two points on the edge, two opposite points. We can round the number by changing its properties. Go into the property tab, length unit, linear resolution and move to one. We can also change the height of the text, but also the arrows. We can even add a comment pointing towards uh, something on your model. The scene seems a bit dark, so we can put the intensity of the light a bit higher. 120, 150 maybe. If we want, we can even change the tone of the light, adding something a bit warmer. Just this. You can choose to display or not the surface edge, tangent edge, or surface echo curves. Finally, we can add some post-production effects in the property tab when nothing is selected such as changing the black and white point which allows you to bring dark tones a bit darker and white tones a bit whiter or darker. When you're happy with the results, you can export your viewport with viewport capture to file. Choose your dimension, choose the number of passes you want to render, save it and wait that it renders. Here you go, our beautiful render is finished. In this tutorial we saw to create quick renders for design review and presenting your ideas to clients. You can see that with only some few tricks you can achieve a very nice result.